Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Kitchen. I just realized you guys can see the new shelves that got put up just a couple days ago. They're very pretty. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the deduction theorem. So this is a meta theorem about propositional logic, in particular about propositional proofs. So it's not going to be something that we prove within the proof theory, it's something we prove about the proof theory. And it's a very nifty little sort of result. And it's something that is actually you know, the question of, can you prove a deduction theorem? So a variant of the one that I'm going to prove for propositional logic for various other logics is often an open question, particularly if you're introducing or developing a new type of logic, new proof system, new semantics, something like that. One of the natural questions to ask is, can you prove a deduction theorem? In classical logic, the answer is yes. And in fact, it's going to be really, really easy at the level of propositional logic, but it's still a nifty little result. So let me get up my whiteboard, get full screen, and there we go. So the deduction theorem is this. Oh, I need to move. There we go. So let gamma be a set of well-formed formulas in the language of propositional logic, because everything we're doing is propositional logic. Then we can prove the following result. That if you can derive some well-formed formula phi from this set of formulas, gamma, you can, or, sorry, you can, if you can prove the conditional if phi then psi from a set of assumptions gamma. This is the case if and only if you could also take that same set of assumptions, add phi as another assumption, and then prove psi directly. So what we do is this, the deduction theorem allows us to shift back and forth between proving conditionals and proving straight up conclusions conditional upon having something in the antecedent. Now, this is an if and only if claim. So that means that we've got to prove both from the left to the right and from the right to the left. So the proof has two parts. We will start with, let me check my notes, which one do I do first? We'll start with the right to the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that from gamma, we can in fact prove that phi implies psi. So we don't know what the proof looks like, but we know that we have it because that's what we have from our assumption. So now what we need is to construct a new proof that has gamma as its assumptions, phi as its assumptions, and then has at some point later down in the proof, psi alone on a line. So I'll just say that we need to construct a proof of psi from the assumption of phi along with the assumption of all the whiffs in gamma. So what we want to have is some proof where you've got, you know, just going to write gamma. We don't know how many members gamma has. In fact, it could be empty, but we'll just put them here and we'll just label this as assumption. And then here we're going to have some new assumption of phi and down here at some point, say at line n, we want to have psi. Now the question is, what do we fill in these dot, dot, dot? Well, let's get it. Here we go. We can fill in the dot, dot, dot with the proof of phi implies psi that we know we have by our assumption. So the assumption that we made that from gamma alone, we can, we can prove that phi implies psi. So we have gamma here. So anything that we can prove from that, we can just write down that proof 
So at some line, we will have, say, line j, we will be able to prove that phi implies psi. So this is from here. Let's label this assumption one. Then we can just say that we know that we have this proof. We insert it into this proof that has this extra assumption of phi, renumbering lines as necessary. And then we have what we need here at line n because we can get it through conditional elimination. Ooh, this needs a line number. Let's call that line i. Conditional elimination of lines i and j. So we know that from gamma, we can already improve the conditional. If we add to our set of assumptions the antecedents, well, then we can derive the consequent through conditional elimination. So that's one direction. Now let me erase, erase this so that we've got space to be able to prove the other direction. The other direction is actually even simpler. Actual erasers on actual whiteboards are a lot faster. There we go. So if we're going to be proving the other direction, ah, we need to actually be able to prove. Then we start off by assuming this. So we will assume that from gamma and phi as our assumptions that we can prove some formula psi. We need to change this into a proof that doesn't have phi as an assumption so that it only relies the only assumptions it depends on are the formulas in gamma and is a proof of the implication from phi to psi. Now, think about this in like ordinary proof terms. If what we want to prove is a, uh, a conditional, what do we need? We need to have the assumption of the antecedent a derivation of the consequence, and then we can take that subproof, close it off, discharge the assumption, and introduce a new conditional. So what we have, suppose that we have all of our assumptions in gamma up here. Now, normally when we're first writing down a proof, we write each, we take our initial set of premises and we just lump them all at the top and we don't introduce new scope lines for each of them. But we could because it's, it's the same sort of thing to say, okay, first I assume my first premise, then I assume the second one, then I assume the third and so on. So what we will do is, okay, it's just one of our initial assumptions that we have, but we'll set it off. So we are going to kind of highlight this as the assumption that we are interested essentially in getting rid of. So what we are doing is this phi is going to move from the right hand, or sorry, the left hand side of the turnstile over to the right hand side. Now, if we've got, if we know that from the assumption of all of the formulas in gamma and the assumption of phi, you know, let's call that line i, that we can prove psi, so here again, we will call this assumption, this, this assumption that we have this proof here. So this will be just replicating this fact. Then what we are able to do at this line of the proof is to just use conditional introduction, citing the subproof from lines i to j, and there you have it. We've removed this assumption from our assumption set and said, you've got this uh, conditional instead. And you can do this actually for every single formula in gamma. So let me just give you kind of an example of this. Say that we've got at line one, we have, ooh, I'm gonna need a different line. Let me erase that. Shorter scope line. So at line one, say we have assumption gamma one. And then at line two, we have assumption gamma two, 
line three, assumption gamma three, suppose, suppose gamma just has three formulas in it. And then we've got our extra one here at line four, we have phi. Then what our green one assumption here says is that, okay, at some point you get psi. The deduction theorem says, okay, well, from the assumption of phi to the proof of psi, you can turn that into a conditional just through conditional introduction. That's lines four to J. But now J plus one depends on the assumption at line three. So we can do exactly the same thing. So at line J plus two, I could say, well, if I have gamma three, then I can prove that phi implies psi. So that's conditional introduction from lines three to J plus one. Now, this line here, J plus two, relies on the assumption at line two. That's very convenient. So I can do the same trick. J plus three says that, well, if I have gamma two, then if I have gamma three, then if I have phi, I can prove psi. So again, conditional introduction, line two to J plus two. Now, this is kind of the cool part because we've never seen anything like this because every single one of our proofs has always started with an assumption, but you can get rid of that assumption at the very last line by using this conditional introduction trick. So right now, J plus three depends on line one. But we can close that scope line and over here, outside of the scope of any assumptions, I can say, well, if I have gamma one, then if I have gamma two, then if I have gamma three, then if I have phi, I have psi. And that is conditional introduction lines one to J plus three, and I'm running out of space, but there you go. So this, this method of kind of peeling away your assumptions works. Is You can get to a point where you don't have any assumptions left at all. So when I said over here that gamma could in fact be empty, this is what I was saying. So if you can prove something without any assumptions at all, then you know, here, let me, let me write down kind of another version of this or an instance of this proof. So suppose that you can prove phi implies psi from no assumptions at all. This will be the case if and only if from the assumption of phi, you can prove psi. So this is just when there are no extra assumptions being made in gamma. So there you have it. It's the deduction theorem and it's proof. We will use this in proving the soundness of the various uh, basic proof rules that we've introduced in previous videos. And you'll see why it's important because it allows us to kind of strip away our assumptions so that we essentially you have fewer things that you need to be dealing with. And we need this in order to be able to make sense of what's going on when we start our soundness proof, which will start with assumptions. So even though you can, it's possible to end a proof without having made any assumptions or when, you know, sorry, it's possible to end a proof having discharged all of the assumptions you've made, every single proof without fail will start with the assumption of some fact. So that's how we'll get going with things. We will talk about the soundness of, well, no, next video, we will talk about some of the general features of proofs that uh, kind of rely on some of these notions that we've introduced with the deduction theorem. And then we'll start actually proving soundness. So I look forward to seeing you then. Cheers, bye.